right now, I want to bring on from the Community Relations Board, Miss Sharina Cloud. Yeah. Oh. You, you familiar with breaks? Yeah. You yes, I am. I just made one down here. I was telling stories. <laughs> now, she would know. Sharina is on the Community Relations Board. I was a parole officer. Parole officer. Reentry specialist. Reentry specialist. And now I'm a project coordinator for the City of Cleveland Community Relations Board. So I, wow. I run a gang initiative for the city, trying to keep the kids and the young adults safe from each other. Now, did you have a... You ever notice when you go down to the Justice Center, those type of people, not saying you, always have an attitude or a chip on the shoulder. Maybe because they deal with a lot of ignorance all day and they tired of it. I don't know. Is, is, is that the, was that the case with yourself? I mean, can well, you explain that, that type of attitude and that type of mentality? I can. Uh, well, luckily, I never worked at the Justice Center. Okay. Just Us Center, that's what we used the, to call it. The Just Us the Just Center. Us Center, you right. Got that right. Just Us that's in there, unfortunately. But it takes a very special person to work in corrections. Okay. You have to be someone, first of all, that's compassionate and that really likes people and who really wants to give individuals a second chance. Right. So, and then you have to just understand that people make mistakes. But there are some people who do need to be locked up. Don't get me wrong. Right. But there are some people who just make mistakes and they just need that opportunity, that guidance to get back on their feet. And now, then that'd be fine. Now, I'm assuming that most of the individuals in that position of authority, mm -hmm. they do start out compassionate and then it, the job tends to wear on them. And then how do they gain that compassion back? I mean, what brings them back to life to want to actually care and make a change? The key is you never lose it, number one. Number two, you have to have something else outside of that job. But first and foremost, you have to have a strong foundation. And the only foundation that I've found that has worked for me is God. So you just have to believe that you are called to that, to that now position. Now with all the time and experience They came to you with the type of mentality, Miss Cloud. I, I can't make it. I got felonies out the wazoo. You know, they won't give me a job. They won't hire me. Mm -hmm. I don't have any skills. What have been? What has been your best advice that you've seen work in so many cases that maybe could be a blanket, you know, mm -hmm. piece of advice? It depends on the on the person. It depends on the situation where they're at right now and what they've got in their past. And then we just kind of talk about their skills because everybody has skills. They probably work in the institution if they spend any significant amount of time, and they have to learn how to transfer those skills to the outside world. What I found, because I've been working in this field almost 20 years, is that individuals don't understand how the essence of time until they get, and unfortunately black men, until they get late 30s and 40s, and then they want to play catch up. Right. So if, if they could just, and I know it's a lot of different factors, because we had a conversation I was here earlier in the studio last week, but it's a lot of different factors that go into that. So if they, when they call me and we kind of figure out what, what, where they're good at, my advice to them always is to, you probably need to expound on your skills by possibly either starting your own business, because some of them have had their own businesses, but unfortunately they was flying under the radar screen, right. which means you know they didn't get their, their business structure together, mm -hmm. they didn't get their logo, they didn't file with the state, the federal government, all of that. So they just need that guidance. Right. And there's agencies out there like the Urban Lead and WECO Foundation that do those type of things for individuals, and they do them for rel relatively uh, low expense. But that information has to get out there, which right. is why we're having the right. Green right. Expo right. is uh, basically the first of its kind here in the city of Cleveland because the population- First of its kind. First of its kind. And the reason why is because it is a reentry resource exposition for the formerly incarcerated ex-offender individual, where they can come and talk with approximately 80 to 88 agencies that have been invited from the federal government to state to local to um, the, the local community to the county, right. and also faith-based grassroots and nonprofit organizations. Now, how enthusiastic are those agencies with being a part of this, to your knowledge? They're enthusiastic because they already service the ex-offender population, not, exclusive, not inclusively, but they also, not exclusively, but inclusively. But what they're most excited about is that they get an opportunity also not to just interact with the individuals down and provide their services and resources and next steps for them, but also they can network with each other. Because if we, we have a large population of individuals coming back from our state prisons. We have a large population of individuals who are on county probation. And Mayor Jackson knew that. And right. under his vision, he wanted something for the reentry population. So under my director, who is Blaine Griffin, and I thank him so much for that, of the Community Relations Board, they allowed us to put this fair on. 
which we are calling the Reentry Resource Exposition. Again, which is one of a kind, they're already talking about next year um, exposition, but it's for the formerly incarcerated population from 10 to 2, and the, and the key to it is that they can come and talk with these agencies. The agencies will be able to look up their cases um, through their own databases, find out what's going on with them, give them information and next step information so that when they go to the organizations, they'll be more empowered with the information that they received that day. Right. It's not a job fair. Many people think it's a job fair. Right, right. No matter that's, how much we market it, they believe it's a job fair. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not a job fair, unfortunately. Do but you have those reason. elements there? We do. We do have job training placement uh, organizations that will be there that work with them uh, during the training program, after, like the job, also included with the job bank so that they help them. Are, are, the are you comfortable with, uh, with the with the direction that this exposition is taking on, are you with, with having underlying knowledge of it mm -hmm. and of the people that's involved and your experience at what you do? Are you comfortable with the direction of this exposition? I am. I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that, of course, you know, it's tight times right now economically. Right. So, of course, the city of Cleveland doesn't have as much money as. Uh, they once had, you know, they just have to watch the budget that much more. So if the resources, though, that the people are providing through the agencies and through what we've been able to just leverage right. have been tremendous. So right. again, under, you know, Mayor Jackson's vision and the, uh, the Community Relations Board with Director Griffin, also with the Director, uh, Director Cox from uh, Parks and Recreation, right. everybody has come together to, to pull this off pretty much in the city of Cleveland because we know that the population out there needs this Again, where support. is it located and what time and what day? It's going to be on Thursday. April 21st from 10 to 2 at Public Auditorium, right across the street from City Hall. It's only one door, ladies and gentlemen, Lakeside, 500 Lakeside Avenue. Now, in all your experience and everything, right now you got the people's ear. What can you tell somebody on the brink of self-destruction right now to keep them from even being in a system and going through things like that? I would tell them to think about a time in their life where they they, they didn't think they couldn't make, they didn't think they could make it, but they did. Even if it was something that they just knew they had to do if it was wrong. They st if they still did something negative, they still mustered up enough energy and confidence to do that. So all this is is just transferring those skills over. It's just allowing yourself to do something positive. Right. And it gets dark and it gets it gets hectic and it gets confusing and it gets it gets a very tight. I understand all of that. I've never I've never gone to jail. I've never uh, been in trouble with the law. I do not want to get in trouble with the law, but I have been rejected. I have been lonely. I have been uh, left with low self-esteem. Okay. So I think that's one reason why I have compassion for them. But they, you can't allow yourself to get to that place. So you have to have at least one person that you can find or know, even if it's a celly, if it's somebody down the D block, or if it's somebody at home that you can latch on to so that they can talk to you. But most importantly, you don't have to learn how to talk to yourself. Because it is transforming. Yeah. Thank you.